Welcome back to another episode of the Casey Campbell Podcast. Casey Campbell with you, of course. We are pleased to be joined by none other than Connor Zilich. Uh, he's going to be doing a lot of things this year. So uh, to kind of just just explain everything that you're kind of doing uh, in 2023. And thanks, uh, thanks for coming on, man. Yeah, first off, thank you for having me. Um, it's been a long time coming to be on your podcast, so glad to be here. And uh, yeah, 2023 is looking busy. Um, it's going to be north of 35 weekends for me, um, and that's going to include the Trans Am TA2 schedule with Silverhair Racing. Same deal that I had this year, just um, going to be doing one more race than last year. So I'm, we're going to be going for a championship this year in that series. Um, and then along with that, we're going to be doing the Cars Tour and Late Model Stock with Carol Speed Shop. Um, and then in Pro Late Model with uh, Rackley War um, for a few select races with them. Um, and I'm not going to be able to do the full Cars Tour due to conflicts with uh, TA2, but I'm going to try and squeeze in as many races as I can. And then alongside that, to keep my road racing background, uh, I'm going to be doing some more MX5 Cup with Hicks and Motorsports. Um, I'm only going to get to do four weekends in that, but that starts up here um, in the next two or three weekends um, at Daytona, the Rolex weekend. So that's uh, kind of the first pro race for me. So I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah, funny enough, uh, you, know, you know, I actually talked to Brian today about some other things. So, uh, yeah, we're going to have another one of those drivers uh, in MX5 on in uh, maybe just a few days. So stay Perfect. tuned. Perfect. Um, that was to the audience. So um, so let's talk about just um, let's start with um, let's start with what you're doing now with MX5. Um, you're running uh, just a few races with uh, with Hicks and Motorsports. I know you've ran in. Um, you've ran in the MX five cup series for a while. Uh, what do you just like about those cars? Um, I just like the close racing. Um, I can't say I have more fun racing anything else, late models, TA two, um, even with all the horsepower that those cars have, um, always going back to MX five cup. I enjoy the racing the most, um, just cause the drafting and the, um, it's just like a chess match. I mean, you gotta, um, play your pieces, right. And if it comes to you at the end of the race and you're in the right spot, and it takes luck sometimes, but that's part of it. Um, and that's kind of what I really like about it. It's just the um, competitive atmosphere and also the off the track. I mean, every single driver in that series, um, you're friends with all of them and everyone's so respectful and um, kind and everyone wants everyone to be better. better. So um, that's just the family atmosphere, the competitive aspect to it, and really just how the cars draft so well and um, create such great racing just brings me back. And um, I can't wait to get back out there at Daytona. Daytona was one of the most fun, fun tracks and fun races I've ever had, especially last year in the rain at nighttime. Um, that was something special. Yeah. It's, uh, and by the way, I mean, MX five is always the, uh, um, the fun, one of the funnest motorsports out there. So stay tuned. Those races are fun to watch because you never know what's going to happen. Uh, of course, let's talk about, you know, um, the main thing you're kind of doing, uh, this year with Tran with Trans Am, we'll get to the uh, we'll get to the late model stuff in just a minute. But let's talk about, of course, uh, racing with Silver Hair Racing and in, in that series, um, running for the championship in that. Uh, we've seen Trans Am over the years kind of really kind of be this place where you know drivers that that want to go to NASCAR or want to have a you know a career in other in other forms of motorsports um, kind of go to Trans Am and kind of you know harsen their road course skills and all that. What's it like to uh, now run for a championship? Um, I'm looking forward to it. I had a lot of fun this past year, just my first year with Silver Hair Racing. And uh, uh, my, my teammate, Maurice Hole, he's been with me, alongside me the whole, the whole last season and um, supporting me. I support him. We help each other out. And uh, it's been a lot of fun just working with everyone under the team there, um, growing our chemistry. And um, it really started to show at the end of the year. I think the last three or four races, we were really, really fast. Um, and ended up getting uh, second on the last race of the season in a bat last lap battle for the win, um, which just kind of showed our speed. And um, that's kind of what we're looking forward to carrying on into the next season um, coming up in just a few short months. Um, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to TA2 as well. Um, I have a lot of fun just with the high horsepower, low weight. Um, those cars handle really well for uh, what they look like. So, um, you know, that series is, is really cool. And, um, it's growing super, super fast. I mean, um, over the last few years, it's become a very competitive professional series. So um, just to be able to do that again this year is really exciting. All right. Um, now let's talk about some of the late model stuff that you're going to be doing. Um, just kind of explain, just for, 
I'm still so confused by with all the stuff that you're doing um, with two different types of two. You're driving for two different teams and in mm-hmm. all categories and cars too. Or what's that? Uh, what's that going to be like? Honestly, I'm not even sure what it'll be like. So I'll be doing pro late model, which is um, a straight rail car, a little bit lighter with a little bit less horsepower. Um, so it handles better, but it doesn't have as much horsepower as the late model stock. Um, and that's kind of the, main the main car to race around the north carolina virginia south carolina area um you know junior motorsports fields cars and that and uh it's super competitive with the car sewer so um you're going up against a lot of guys that have been doing it for a while and and know what they're doing and that's kind of what i want to that's kind of where i want to put myself is somewhere that i'll be able to learn a lot from people that have been doing it for a while and um hopefully pick up on these skills pretty quick obviously i'm not an oval racer um so i'm coming into it with a little bit of a fresher mindset and just trying to learn as much as I can. So kind of doubling up on pro late model and late model stocks, just going to give me more seat time and uh, more ability to learn. Thanks to um, Chevy. They've been a big help for me and um, supporting my, my career the last year. Um, so we're just looking forward to, to getting more seat time and whatever I can. And um, especially ovals. Talk about you uh, connecting with, with, um, with Carol's as well as uh, with Rackley as well. Um, so yeah, they, uh, Carol speed shop, we, I kind of started racing my ovals, um, with them. So that was about a year, just, just under a year ago, um, kind of mid mid season last year. Um, I kind of got my toes wet with some late motor racing. Um, and that was with Carol speed shop and, uh, Chevy was supporting me and kind of set me up with them. And, um, they're kind of like a mom and pop team. Um, just Justin and his father, uh, run the team and run the show, uh, but they put on really competitive cars. They finished third at Martinsville, one of the biggest late model races with Jacob Hefner. And, um, you know, that's kind of what I like, uh, not being in one of the big teams, just a smaller team that knows what they're doing and um, has a lot of knowledge in the sport and has been around it for a long time. So um, they're super value to, valuable to my learning, and um, they're able to put a lot of focus on on me and what I'm doing. So um, that works really well. And then Rackley War as well. Chevy um, has helped with me helped me as well with that and putting that together. And, um, you know, they've been super dominant in the Nashville, uh, fairgrounds and the pro late model and, um, even scoring the pole with the snowball derby with, with Josh Berry and a super late model. So, um, you know, they've been a super dominant team in the straight rail car and, um, you know, they have a lot of knowledge and Willie Allen and, um, a lot of great people over there. So I'm going to be able to learn a lot with them as well. So, um, I'm going to be supported by two great teams that are, uh, going to be able to help me a lot and, and hopefully get me on the right track and over race. Yeah. Okay. So since this is your first time coming on here, uh, I know a lot of people have kind of caught your attention and, you know, I've learned a lot about you. So let's kind of get to know you a little bit. How do, how'd you get, how'd you get into racing? Yeah. So I started racing when I was about four and a half, five years old in go-karts um, at Carolina Motorsports Park. My dad's always been a gearhead. He's always liked uh, cars and, he wasn't fortunate enough to race when he was growing up. Um, and he kind of gave me that chance to, to get kickstarted in the sport. And I have two older brothers actually, and we all started, um, just going to the track for fun. And, um, it never really was anything serious. Just, we would go on the weekends and turn some laps and have a good time as a family together. Um, and then we kind of started traveling a little bit. We went to, um, Florida and, um, that's when things really started to pick up. We saw the um, the ceiling of how high you could go in the sport and um, just really how much fun we were having doing it. So me and my oldest brother um, kept going and, and kept doing it and started racing on the national scene and um, really just things started to pick up. And uh, my brother ended up going to college. So it was just me left. And uh, I switched to online school, committed a lot of time to, to racing and um, ended up going to Europe for, for some karting races and winning a world championship, a European championship. And um, just collecting a bunch of awards and um, having a lot of fun along the way and um, all that European experience in karting and, um, you know, everywhere I've traveled, it's been good for me on the track, but as well as off the track growing as a person and um, just becoming an independent uh, 16 year old kid. Um, you know, I traveled to, to Europe kind of by myself at 12 years old and my parents weren't able to come because they were working. So um, it was a good experience for me and uh, I enjoyed just, spending a lot of time over there and, and learning from all the great people that have a lot of knowledge and, and road racing and um, cause all the F1 over there. So um, really just spent a lot of time racing go-karts and then 
uh, started my club racing scene um, in a spec Miata just kind of for fun. It was my brother's old car. He used to do a few races in spec Miata. So um, it's kind of like a hand-me-down car. And I uh, got started in that. And now I'm, now I'm racing some pro series this year. And um, it kind of just went from a hobby to, to what I'm trying to make as a dream. Yeah. And you're doing a lot of things. And I mean, you're going to be pretty busy throughout the weekend of um, the year. Let me ask you this. I know this, uh, this questions kind of came up. Um, where do you want to go? There's a lot of places where you could go like, like, where's your, like, I mean, is it IndyCar, IMSA, F1, NASCAR? Where are you kind of leaning toward? Or do you not know? Um, if I were to pick one, I'd pick NASCAR. Um, just the opportunities and, uh, you know, the people that have been supporting me, um, kind of leaning me in that direction. Um, obviously, I'd still be more than happy to, to end up racing IMSA as well. Um, I'm going to try and stay away from open wheel racing. Uh, I just find it a little bit more difficult to make a career out of that. So um, it's either going to be an IMSA or Indy or uh, IMSA or NASCAR, uh, one of the two. Um, but really, I'm keeping my doors open. I'm 16 years old and um, still have a lot of time to grow. And I'm just trying to race as much as I can right now because it'll help me as a racer um, instead of trying to pick one path and stick to it. Uh, I still have a few more years before I kind of need to do that. Um, so right now, I'm just kind of keeping my doors open, doing whatever I can, racing whatever I can. And um, when the opportunity comes where I have to pick one or the other, um, I'll decide then. But for now, I'm just going to keep racing uh, everything. All right. You can still race everything, even though you can, even though you want you. Yep. Can. Yep. That's the best. Right. Thing about it. Uh, let's get to know, let's get to know you a little bit more. Um, just some, get kind of just some fun questions. How about that, Connor? Cool. Go for it. Uh, what's your go-to place for food? Ooh. Um, I'd say Mexican food. Um, any, any Mexican food I like just quick, pick it up. Always, always quick. So there's a place right near me called El Cerro Reyes um big place in mooresville so um if i were to pick one spot just to go eat dinner it'd be there uh favorite driver growing up uh growing up i'd say lewis hamilton um growing up watching him win back to back to back world championships in f1 um pretty inspiring and um the amount of work he put in um i'd say he was my my most inspired i was most inspired by him okay um favorite tv or i'm pretty sure you spend a lot of time on traveling on planes and all that stuff um so this this could be an interesting one favorite tv or streaming show you're really into right now right now um i just finished watching the recruit on netflix which is a really good show um i'd say my favorite one of my favorites of all time stranger things i always as generic as it may be it's still a really good show and um definitely up there for me um let's see favorite movie movie hmm probably pulp fiction uh from way back in the day it's a good movie okay you said you were 16 years old how are you i and i know you've had tons of years of driving experience they always you know driver's ed teachers in north carolina always say that you know if you actually race cars you know you if you actually race cars they actually end up being actually good drivers actually on the road. So how are you at driving an actual car? I'd say I'm pretty good. I'm, I try not to get mad on the road. You know, there's some pretty bad drivers out there, but um, I keep my cool and um, I haven't gotten myself in any trouble yet. So I'd say I'm a pretty good driver. Okay. So do you get, do you now, do you get mad when you're in the race car? Um, in the race car, I do get mad, but that's one of the things that you kind of got to control, find ways to control it. So um, as much as I may want to get mad, I find my way, find myself, find myself and uh, just being able to control myself. Okay. Um, all right. Hmm. What else can I ask you? Uh, favorite vacation spot? Mm, I'd say I'm a big scuba diver person. I'm cert scuba certified. So, um, you know, I like uh Cozumel Mexico that was really cool um really just anywhere where there's good diving um also I enjoy skiing a lot so I went to Jackson Hole last year in Wyoming um that was a really cool spot just Yellowstone and snowmobiling and skiing I enjoyed that a lot so probably one of those two okay I know okay so here and all right here's the last one 
what is something people do not know about Connor's Village? Um, I'd say um, most people um, probably wouldn't know my name, my nickname Flipper. Um, so I have a nickname Flipper. I was eight years old, 2014, um, and I was racing go-karts in Ocala, Florida. And it's really rare to flip a go-kart. You don't see it very often, maybe once a weekend, something like that. Um, and I went out for practice and I got pushed into someone's rear tire and flipped. And then the next session, same thing. Um, it was actually a heat race. So we went out for a heat race and on the start, uh, a few cars spun out and I ended up flipping another, another person's tire and flipped and back to back sessions and ended up getting the nickname flipper, which flipping in like a dirt car or something, um, that'd be a little bit more, uh, prone to happen but in a go-kart it is so rare to flip so um flipping in back-to-back sessions was something that was pretty pretty surreal so um i ended up getting the nickname flipper and it's still painted on the back of some of my helmets um so that's probably one thing that most people don't know about me yeah well they're gonna do a lot of flipping this week down in uh down in tulsa oklahoma with yeah the they will yeah that's yep. fun stuff there i think well, i don't even know what the flip counts at so uh We'll have to we'll have to see on that. Should be a fun week. Yeah. This is where you need to go for that. Uh, Connor Zilich, thank you so much for coming on and talking with us. And uh, uh, best of luck in all the things that you're doing this year. And uh, when is your first event for people that may want to tune in? Uh, it'll be Daytona for the MX5 Cup. Uh, that's the last weekend in January, I want to say, or maybe the second to last. I think it's around the 26th, 27th um, area. Um, yeah. So that'll be my first my first weekend this year. So. Make sure to watch it. It'll be an entertaining one, that's for sure. It's going to be entertaining for sure. Anytime the Mazda MX-5 Cup is out there, uh, should be some should be some uh, entertaining fun, especially at Daytona with the, with those finishes in the past few years. So, yep, Connor, you thanks got it. Thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Okay, bud. Thank you.